In this video, I'll show you how you can fix paragraph and list spacing in Adobe Captivate. Okay, let's get started here. I got an email from Jeff Kaminsky who asked a couple of questions. First, he said, is there a way for collaborating between different users on a Captivate project file? Unfortunately, Jeff, there is not. In fact, I would avoid working on an Adobe Captivate project file from a cloud or company intranet location. Instead, you should always work on a local copy of your CPTX files. The risk of corrupting your project files is too great when trying to edit them from a remote location. In fact, what you may wish to do is to divide the project up into three or four chunks or sections and divide that amongst the different users to work on. And then later, once you've completed all of those sections, combine them together as one project. The second question that Jeff asks, is there a good way for customizing bullet points? Uh, I don't know if it's a good way, Jeff. This is actually one of the biggest uh, complaints about uh, Adobe Captivate. And for the folks at Adobe, if you're listening, uh, this is an area that I think we could definitely see some improvement on in future releases of Adobe Captivate. Uh, first off, uh, bulleted text within Adobe is somewhat limited. And this relates to a couple of issues. First of all, uh, bullets, of course, are limited to the selections that you see here. So you can have, um, you know, one with a little dot after it or one with a parentheses. You can have Roman numerals. You can have standard bullets. And there are a choice of about seven bullet types. So it's really not a great selection. I worked for a company a few years ago that had a very specific requirement for their bullets in their bulleted text. And this solution not only solved their problem, but it also addresses another issue, and that's to do with the paragraph spacing and the list spacing, which becomes a problem as well. And I'll cover both of those things for you today. So here's a block of text. In fact, this is just the, the, the narration that I just went through at the beginning of this video here. And this is fine. It's actually divided up into paragraphs, but you wouldn't know it because there is no paragraph spacing built into Adobe Captivate. This applies to lists as well. So if you had a, uh, a bulleted list, uh, all of the bullets would kind of be jammed together. There'd be no spacing to separate those bullets, whether they be numbered or lettered or so on. Um, there are some ways around this uh, inherently. The first thing you can do is you can add an extra enter uh, key after each of the items and that works for something like this here where I've got a single uh, caption a text caption and I've simply just put an extra enter key after each paragraph that I'm working with where that becomes a problem though is that if you apply bullets to that so now I'll have a bullet for those blank lines as well as the lines of text now you can get rid of that I could go in and just simply uncheck the bullet option by using the big X uh, for each of the line items. But the thing to remember is that this is breaking a list. So the list previously uh, that existed here is going to be broken. So that looks okay. That's one solution for standard bullets. But let's say you're using um, letters or numbers. And here's an example of numbers. So and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right up to 11. But the problem is, is I only have one, two, three, four, five, six lines of text. So it's putting in again uh, numbers for each blank line as well. Now, if I simply was to remove that, um, you see it, it's breaking my list. So it's renumbering the later numbers. In fact, what I'll end up with is if I remove the bullet from, or in this case, the numbered list from each of the blank lines, I just end up with six items all with the number one in front. It's not very informative. Now there is a solution and uh, here's what I've come up with. And in fact, I've taken advantage of uh, smart position within Adobe Captivate. So I've, I've broken all of these uh, individual paragraphs 
into their own text captions. And, you know, I've kind of made some decisions as to what size they should be. And I've positioned them relative to one another. So if I move the top one, you know, I'm moving all of the text. So I'm tied to, uh, in this case here, the title. And then, of course, all subsequent uh, list items are tied to each other. So you can see here my anchor points, or top hats as some people like to call them, I've anchored this first block of text or paragraph to the title and the next block to the first block, the third block to the second, the th uh, fourth block to the third, and so on. And of course, they're all tied together with one another there. And instead of having um, uh, bulleted text within each block, I've simply created an additional caption with one, two, three, four, five, and six, and place them appropriately. So that's one solution. I did say it was a solution. I didn't say it was a great solution or even a good solution. And again, if, if the folks at Adobe are listening to, to my videos, uh, this would be an area that I think I'd really like to see uh, for future versions of Captivate. Another solution here, a variation on the same thing as I'm using a um, a lettered list, so A, B, C, D, E, F, and this works well. Again, it's all about making sure that you position everything in relation to one another. So if you do have an object move or adjusted in size, um, you know, you, you do uh, see the, the movement of the individual items, and then you can have the proper spacing between all these items. And if you do this properly, and if you do your text size properly, it should work across all your breakpoints as well. Now, to more directly address um, Jeff's question of customized bullets, I've made a duplicate of this here. So here are my blocks, and I'm simply going to apply the same principles I've used to a little sphere that I've created. I'm going to use this as a bullet. It's important that you select an appropriate size. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos on responsive design, make sure you don't use auto anything. Um, you should always use either a specific pixel count or a percentage of the total screen size. Pixels might be a better way to go in this case because you, you're going to want to keep this um, spherical in shape. So this particular uh, sphere is 82 pixels high. It's a little taller than it is wider and 80 wide. So I'm going to reduce this. And in this case, I'm going to leave it on auto height for a moment. And I'm going to adjust this down until I'm satisfied with the size of it here. Because I want it to be um, a good size in relation to the text on the screen here. So let's just, in fact, we'll, we'll line it up with the last bit of text. And we'll use that position as a starting position there. And um, we'll just make it the top of that there. I'm going to zoom in just so we get a, a nice close up of what we're doing here. So I'm just going to, uh, we've got that. So I'm just going to adjust the width until I have something about the size of one line of text. That's really reducing the quality of the image, but don't worry too much about that. Uh, we're going to try to keep it simple. I think that's pretty good there. And I just want to make sure that I'm tied to the right item, and I'm not. So let's just make sure we're at the top of this here. And we'll just change that to... there. So that's going to be about right there, I think. So I just need to, let's go back to best fit and make sure I'm selecting the right object to tie it to. So let's go back. So that looks pretty good there. And I can adjust the position uh, for the bullet next to the, yeah, so zero and zero seems to work nice there. And all I need to now do is duplicate that a number of times until I have the appropriate uh, 
the appropriate positioning for all of them. So let's, I'll do this real quick and we'll fast forward through that so you can see the results. Okay, so I think I've got it. I've got all the customized bullets here. Uh, one thing I noticed is that my spacing on a couple of the objects are a little bit off here. So I'm just going to adjust that. And again, I've tied the bullet to this text. So if I move the text, yep, the bullet moves with me. So that's good news. So now I have a bulleted list with customized bullets and I have a little bit of spacing after each paragraph, or in this case, each list item. So the beauty of this, of course, is that this should work well across all breakpoints. Uh, you will have to probably adjust the text size, the font size, and uh, you may have to go through and apply position properties to all views. Uh, unfortunately, you have to do this for each item. You can't select a group of items and apply those position properties. And again, that's a little feedback for uh, Adobe as well. If the Adobe folks are listening, uh, I really would like to see uh, position properties, be able to, at the very least, be able to select all similar types of items. But if I was to select all of these graphics and right click, position properties are not available for me. So I have to do that one by one and this will make responsive design work. As I indicated, you may have to adjust some of the sizes of fonts and maybe even the graphics here. So if we take a look at, yeah, that's not too bad. I think that's pretty good. Again, I might want to shrink those down. It should work pretty well. But this is a solution. Again, it's not the most elegant solution available, but hopefully you guys find this useful. If you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this was helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.